Welcome back, guys, to another Whiskey Wednesday review. I'm Darrell, the Whiskey Saint, and we're going to be diving into some good whiskey, or maybe not good whiskey. <laughs> uh, this was a sample that I actually received from a tasting that I was at the other week. Uh, there was a bunch of bottles there, and we just couldn't get to them all. You know, so the good friends that were there were like, hey, we got sample bottles. Let's pour some of these up that you didn't get a chance to try, and you could try them at a later date to see what your, your thoughts were. You know, so guys, what we're going to be diving into today is a bottle that was released a couple couple months back. Got a bunch of hype. Uh, it is, which it's not too much of a description on here, but it does say WT Jenner. So this is the Wild Turkey Generations. You know, look almost like a Masters Keep release. Same bottle, just not actually part of that collection. But definitely got a lot of hype, you know, coming from like the turkey, the turkey heads. You know, I think it aged, you had some whiskey aged from nine years to 15, I believe, in that bottle. Bottled at 120 point change in terms of proof. Not exactly sure the exact proof, but I believe it was like 120.6, 120.8, somewhere in that range. But the highest bottling of turkey that I've ever tried. Full transparency, guys, this was a full two ounce sample. I poured probably about. God, maybe a quarter of an ounce, not even that, less than a quarter of an ounce and got like a, a little taste a couple days ago. And I was told that this bottle actually needed some air. So I have a Glenn that's been sitting with this in there for about, you know, 10 to 15 minutes or so already. So I kind of want to see if that changes my opinion or gives me different opinions, you know, on the whiskey. If you're new to our channel, guys, Hit that like and subscribe. We're going to kick the show off and dive into some turkey. Cheers. Welcome back, guys. And I'm kind of excited about this, man. Like, I've recently got into the turkey scene probably less than a year ago, to be honest. That might have been, like, the first time I actually tasted a Russell's Reserve pick. You know, so fairly new to it, but love the profile, right? So I've been having, like, masses keeps. I probably got the last, like, five or six releases or so, but never really dived down that that true, like, Russell's Reserve, Kentucky Spirit, rolled you know, until probably 2023, if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. So this is in that realm. Obviously, it's probably the highest proof that they put out so far that I know of. Uh, there could be some higher proofs out there over that 120. But pretty excited. I did, like I said, in the intro, take a quick sip a couple days ago just to kind of get a quick impression, but did hear that it needed some air. So you know, we poured this up about 15 minutes ago or so, and we're going to dive in and just give you my honest thoughts on it. Spin it up a bit. Does definitely have some nice color, though, to it. Like, that's, you can see that on my camera. It's pretty dark, you know, in that nice, big, big glen over there. But definitely sticking to the glass, like, it's creating a halo. Like, I'm twisting it, and you just see it just dripping down. Like, I'm not sure if it's picking it up over there, but yeah, you, you can see it. You see that line going across the top of the glen or right over here. And it's just dripping down from there. But enough about the look of the whiskey. We're here to see how it tastes. Cheers, everybody. I actually wish I wrote down my notes <laughs> originally on this to see how much they do change or if they don't change. But this is this is coming across like chocolatey, which I usually don't get on Russell's. Almost like a like a Tootsie Roll, which I dig Tootsie Rolls. Like this nose for me right now is coming across just really sweet. Definitely has some nice oak, some spice in there, but really chocolatey up front. Not that conventional, like, I'm not sure what warehouses went into this blend, 
But if I was to guess, I would think it would have been maybe more on the lines of maybe like the Tyrones, because I get a lot of darker vibes on those versus some of the Camp Nelsons. Camp Nelsons for me seem to be a little bit more brighter, some cherry forward, some berry notes. And it's just, just all dark. Like there's no there's no brightness to this at all. Yeah, just really chocolatey Tootsie Roll, a little bit of like coffee, but not in an off-putting way. But yeah, there's no like citrus that I typically get on turkey. There's no bright fruits that I get. Yeah, this is just way, way different on profile. Like nosing this, not knowing what it is, I probably wouldn't have thought. Actually, I know I wouldn't have thought turkey on a nose. But cheers, whiskey friends. Let's go in for a taste and see if that opinion changes. Okay. So that's nice. It's a little weird. Not weird in a bad way, but the nose is so dark and dense and oaky. All that chocolate presents itself. But on a palate, it's, it's I don't want to say like a citrus bomb, but I get a lot of like bright fruits and citrus. Which is like, it's the polar opposite from the nose to the palate. Let me take another sip. That, I was not expecting that. Yeah. Hmm. Upon second sip. I thought I was going to get a little bit more of the the spice on the mid to back of the palate, which I didn't get. It just leaves me, honestly, actually wanting a little bit more on the finish. Flavors present itself nicely. It's definitely a lot brighter on the palate versus the nose for me. Like, they're polar opposites, like I mentioned, guys. Like, it's super dark and dense up front, chocolate, coffee vibes in a sense. Then on a palate, it's just like a nice orange citrus spice with not really uh you're not really getting many dark like chocolate or coffee notes at all on the palate and at 120 proof i would have thought this would actually finished a little a little stronger for me like i've had some russell's 13 picks the camp nelson like the single rick house picks those even at 130 no, I think they're 116 proof, seem to finish with more intensity than this actually does. I'm not sure if, actually, no, because the, the highest age in here is 15. I know some of those 13s have some, some higher age in it. I'm not sure the percentages, but I was chalking this up to maybe being just a little bit older in a sense and just maybe the balance kind of canceling out some of the intensity. But... Yeah, the finish for me, it's a medium finish, uh, not not long at all. And that's kind of surprising at 120 proof. I thought it was actually going to just be really intense in a sense, being that, you know, some of the 13s that are, you know, four to five proof points less than this, you know, carry some weight to them. I'm going to take another sip of this, guys, though. It's really good whiskey, like not mad at the flavors that are presented at all, but at retail, I think this bottle was God close to 500 bucks or 450 bucks. I think it, I think it needs to be better than this. <clears throat> in my opinion, uh, I own a Russell's 13 batch two, which I think is better than this. I've had the most recent Camp Nelson Rickhouse. I think that's the F 
I could be mistaken. It's either the CDF, whatever the most recent one is, the second batch that they did, which was better than this. For me, you know, those present a lot of cherry and citrus up front on the nose and palate, which rub me the right way. Like, this is a really good whiskey, but at that price point for retail, I don't think they should be, I don't think it should be anywhere near 500. If it was in that 250 or even at that, the masses keep range, you know what I mean? I think that's a little bit more where it should be uh, versus what they're, they're asking for this. Like it's good whiskey. Is it $500 good whiskey? No. Uh, is it better than the 13s I've had? And I have probably three different batches and I don't think it it's better than any of those three batches, to be honest. You know, they just seem to carry a little bit more weight. I know they're blended with some some higher age whiskey too. Um, slightly a lower proof, but just, you know, just seem to come across a little bit better on the palate. Um, not bad at all. Just that price point and that value is what the downfall, I think, of this bottle is. But we're going to take one more sip, guys. We'll chat about it for a quick minute after that. And we're going to end it off. But cheers to you guys who are still sticking here. Definitely changes a bit the longer it's sitting from that first sip to that sip. It's definitely gotten better. Like I'm saying, guys, it's not bad whiskey, but it's nowhere near worth what the retail is, in my opinion. I, like I said, I think it's 400 or 450, whatever retail was. That's that's a little crazy when Russell's 13, I think, is 150 bucks retail, which I think can hang with this, if not beat it for most people, right? So bring the price point down a bit, then this would be a better bottle, in my opinion. But in terms of just whiskey itself, I think it's really good whiskey. If I had scored this, this probably would have scored in the 80s for sure. I'll say probably about maybe uh, 83 to maybe like an 85, 86 range uh for me at 120 proof it's just lacking on that that finish the nose up front was really really nice palette up front was good mid it turned it up a notch finish left me wanting a little bit more uh especially at that proof point right which is odd like 120 proof you're thinking that's going to be like really really nice on the the palette and the finish which the flavors presented itself nice they sit there for a bit but just doesn't have that that intense small feel that you'll get on, you know, some 120 barrel proofs or so, right? So I'm not sure what this was actually proofed down to. Um, it could have been like really, really high and they proofed it down. So, you know, you're getting a little bit of that, that kind of water mixed into diluted a bit. But yeah, even at 120, it doesn't drink like 120 to me. I would have thought maybe closer to 110 to 115 max, to be honest. But good taste in whiskey, guys. Nose, I think, is maybe like its high point. Like the nose is really, really nice. The palate's good. You know, if we take value out of there and the cost of the bottle, it's a very good whiskey. But, you know, when you're grading a whiskey and reviewing it, you're taking all that into consideration. You know, so when you think of a $400 or a $400 $400 plus <laughs> retail bottle. You want something to kind of blow you out of the water, right? Which this doesn't do it for me. It's good. Would I search it out? No. Would I pay secondary or even retail for this? Absolutely not. You know, I'm more inclined to purchase, you know, some Russell's reserve picks that are really, really good and or some Russell's 13, you know, at a way lesser price point, you know, almost half. But it's definitely something that you would want to try. If it's sitting on a bar at a decent price, you know, grab a pour of it. But I don't think this is the bottle that you need to be searching out for and overpaying for by any means. You know, good whiskey, just not fantastic, you know, especially at that price point. But thank you guys for sticking with me this far, going down that, down that turkey lane. You know, it's fun. You know, like I said, brand new to it about a year ago. So it's fun diving into some turkey. 
because it's 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 all new to me, right? <laughs> you know, so trying to figure out what those distinguishing flavors and notes are for me. So when I taste taste this in a blind or taste some turkey in a blind, a year from now I can kind of pick apart what it is, right? That's the key. Trying to remember those those key little notes that you get for me at least, right? To kind of pinpoint you know, down the line when I really need to use it. (laughs) But cheers to you all for sticking with me. It's been real. Till next Wednesday, you guys have a good night. Cheers. Jeff, just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends and you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends And you say hello again Oh Jeffrey, you Should just be friends with me But you have these whiskey friends